you know, and uh, share this broadcast. And you can say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. You can share this post. You can share this video to get the gospel out and to assist me uh, in reaching our souls with this wisdom. Because this is important wisdom. You know, when you come into this earth realm, you have to be made aware of what's going on in the spirit concerning you. Uh, when we look at the aspect of children, if you look at the state of children today, they're coming into the earth and not even knowing what gender they are. They're saying, uh, I'm a girl, even though they're a boy. So uh, these things have to be dealt with in the heavenly realms. Even a person's sexuality has to be dealt with in the heavenly realms. Your mentality, your perspective, everything has to be dealt with in the heavenly realms. So if you look at what happened in the word, when we're seeing uh, David say in Psalm chapter 24, he said, who can ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who could stand in his holy place? Who shall send? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? This one question is ascending into the heavenly realms. Look, look at what David is saying. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? So you know that the Lord has a hill. Now, what, what is a hill? What, hills and mountains, they are high places. And the reason why the Lord has these high places, there is a level of high activity going on of his power, of his wisdom. And this is the place that people begin to operate in when they're in the wisdom and the prophetic anointing of God. And wisdom is the highest dimension of that prophetic anointing because you look at Solomon, Solomon had the greatest story of kings because of his wisdom. That's what set him apart. And wisdom is the ability to know the interpretation of a thing. Uh, wisdom makes your face shine. We see that in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, that wisdom makes your face to shine. You can interpret things when you have wisdom. If any man will go to the degree of operating in ascending into the heavenly realms, that man first must slow down and learn how to meditate on the word continuously until there's pictures in his mind until his imagination is trained to see correctly because your imagination already operating in demonic fashions. When you hate somebody, that's already an imagination that's corrupted. When you're jealous of somebody, that's already imagination that's corrupted. When you lust after somebody, that's already imagination that's corrupted. So the imagination is already being used whether you agree or not. Like you may say, well, I, I you know, I, don't, I, you know, the pictures in my, well, everybody is having pictures in their mind about something. Even the obese person is always picturing food. So your imagination is at work all the time, but meditation on the word is where the power of God sits on your imagination. And that's when the conversation between you and the Holy Ghost intensifies. You was made to ascend into the heavenly realms and you, you must learn how to do it because in the heavenly realms is strategies and wisdom and understanding and there's, there's an impartation from God on how to overcome hindrances on earth. There's many people today in poverty because they never ascended into the heavenly realm and connected the, 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 the pieces of the puzzle that the reason why their poverty is there is because of a spirit of lust. A spirit of greed, a spirit of dishonor, a spirit of disrespect, a spirit of disloyalty.
The Bible says something powerful here in Ephesians. Look what it says in chapter 1. Let's go to chapter 1, verse 3 in Ephesians. Look what it says here. Now, when any man start to ascend into the heavenly realms, he himself becomes like God in the earth realm to, to, to operate like Ephesians 5, 1 say, be ye imitator of God as their children. You start receiving God's abilities and personality more and more. You have more power to do certain things that will advance your life and will keep you from stagnation, curses, and backlashes, and destruction, and suffering. Let's, let's look at this in Ephesians. Because oftentimes what's, what's going on with people is that they, they don't know how to move in the spirit world. And there's people that's operating in the demonic, but they're moving in the spirit world. And if you don't have understanding there, you'll lose. While you believe that Jesus is Lord, they'll defeat you. Because they're more explosive in Satanism, then you are in your God, in the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one that gets you from point A to point B when we're dealing with ascending into heavenly realms. He has to teach you. you. You have to say, and start right now, Holy Spirit, teach me how to meditate on your word. Holy Spirit, teach me how to ascend into the heavenly realms. Look what Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Now watch this here. Where's the spiritual blessings located? In the heavenly places in Christ. Now, I want you to notice the word in, in heavenly places, in heavenly realms. So when something uses the word in, if somebody says, um, I'm going in McDonald's, I'm going in Walmart, I'm going in Chick-fil-A, that means that there is a location that they are now intermingling with that location and now they're able to receive all that's in McDonald's or all that's in Walmart or all that's in Chick-fil-A. And so you even have a menu of things that you could order while you're in there. So let me show you something about going in heavenly places. Going in heavenly places is dealing with God has made a location where you could enter in through meditating his word, through praying in the spirit. He's made a place that you could enter in while you're seeking him. When your brain becomes focused and steadfast on the Lord, there is a location that you could go in called the heavenly places, the heavenly realms. Now, you notice it's not realm or place. It's places, it's realms, which means that every heavenly realm has a different theme to it. So if somebody is anointed by God to walk in wealth, that heavenly realm is in the realm of wealth. They're withdrawing information from God concerning wealth. Wealth angels, angels that are in the department and the angelic to bring massive wealth to a person so that Psalm 112 verse 3 will manifest. Wealth and riches will be in your house so that Deuteronomy 818 will manifest. You have the power to get wealth so that you'll operate in um, Isaiah 45 verse uh, 2 and 3. The hidden riches of secret places. So that you'll operate in Isaiah 60 verse 11. That it said that men shall bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles. So that heavenly place, its theme will be wealth. Every place in the heavenly realm deals with a different department of your life. And let's deal with this real quickly. Your sexuality. Um, there, there is a place in the heavenly realms 
that deals with everybody's sexuality. Where you get deliverance in the area of the area of your sexuality. When people can't overcome sexual sin, their overcoming of their sexual sin is in the heavenly places. There's a place in the, the, the heavenly realm specifically for a person to overcome sexual sin. Sin where they violate God sexually. Where their body is going into an ecstasy illegally. Are you catching this? Going into an ecstasy illegally. There's sexual deliverance in the heavenly realms. So if somebody is homosexual, they're a man and they like another man, they could receive deliverance in the heavenly places from that appetite to be with another man and their man. When that person begins to meditate and spend time, because there's homosexuals that have fasted. They've gone without food. And they're still homosexual. Because the, the spirit of homosexuality is a strong man demon. Uh, what is the difference between a strong man? You notice... Um, what the Lord was telling them when they had that situation with the little boy, he was telling the disciples that this kind does not come out but by prayer and fasting, fasting and prayer. So there are homosexuals that have fasted before. There's homosexuals that have prayed before. But are there homosexuals that have done both consistently, correctly? Because that's where the deliverance is. A strong man demon will not let you go until you have learned all of the, the information that you need to be liberated from them. A strong man demon is very aggressive and very persuasive and very uh, continuous. They don't stop when you say in the name of Jesus or I bind you, or, I break your power. They don't stop because there's a pathway to get out of homosexuality. The Holy Spirit will give every homosexual uh, a different path. It's not the same path. That's why um, you walk by faith because in faith you have to receive and you have to pursue the Lord for the specific instruction for you. There's no set way to come out of homosexuality like, oh, you know, if you do this, you're going to come out. No, no, no. Because the Holy Spirit going to deal with each person differently. Sometimes you got to stop hanging around a certain person. Most homosexuals hang around other females. Because they, they learn the female way. How the female act, how the female talk, how the female do. So the Holy Spirit will sanctify you from hanging around females. The path to deliverance is always to deprive you of your original schedules. Because remember, if you are bound to a demon, the schedule has strengthened that bondage. So the schedule has to change. You can't keep doing the same thing and then expect, okay, I'm going to get free from homosexuality. No, because the schedule actually fortified the bondage. Deliverance from homosexuality is in the heavenly places. So when somebody is homosexual, they have a spirit inside of them that is living in them to crave their same gender. Many people don't even understand this, that um, the transference of homosexuality and lesbianism if you ever notice a lesbian, um, they'll be in a relationship with a woman that acts like a man. The woman that acts like a man, they often call that woman a stud. All right. The stud is 
dressing like a man and talking like a man. Hey, 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 hey. Sometimes they take uh, hormones to, to grow beards and do different things, right? And even sexually, they attempt to get equipment that is um, similar to the man. So what's really going on here? The woman wants to be a man. So there's a male spirit inside of her. And that man wants woman. And so that spirit of perversion in, in that male demon is inside of that woman to want females on earth. Help you understand it. Remember, it was the fallen angels that looked at woman and said that they were pretty. They were, um, there was a word that they used to use in the Old Testament. That they was fair. And when it said that they was fair, it means that they was, today, how we, how we term it, like in the modern day, like somebody is fine or they're sexy. So imagine fallen angels, angels that used to be in heaven, when they were kicked out, they looked down at man and said, oh, this woman is sexy. And the Bible said they took these women to be their wives. So you understand, these fallen angels were attracted to women. When a woman is lesbian, she has a male demon inside of her. That's why she acts like a man. And she desires to be with another woman because that man is inside her wanting to be with another woman. Now, homosexuality there are female demons. When God created the angelic, he made male and female. The same way he created man, he made male and female. I don't know why it's so hard for some people to comprehend this. But I, I, I mean, it's even in the word, like Proverbs chapter 8. It's talking about the, 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 the female angel of wisdom. It's talking about all these things. You understand? It's talking about the female angel of wisdom. That the angel of wisdom is a female. She said, I was with him when he created the earth. When he created the waters. I was with him. The book of Proverbs. So understand that in the angelic, there's male and female angels. Some of the female angels fell with Lucifer. Now, if, 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 uh, if I could tell you this, God has always been family-minded, so even when he made the angelic, he intended for families in the angelic. The Bible says that um, during the rapture, you won't, you'll be like the, uh, the angels that's not given in marriage. There are angels that's not given in marriage the same way that there's people not given in marriage. There are people like Apostle Paul wasn't given in marriage. But Abram was given in marriage. Are you seeing this? Elijah wasn't given in marriage. But Peter was given in marriage. So, so what is all of this? It shows you that in the angelic, there are angels that are given in marriage and there are angels that are not given in marriage. So people read the word oftentimes without understanding. The, the angels are not given in marriage. This is a bracket of angels that's not given in marriage. Meaning God didn't make them to intertwine with other angels. The same way there's people on earth. God didn't make you to intertwine with the opposite sex. That's why every man must learn to meditate and ascend into the heavenly realms so that you'll receive fresh power from God on how to live out the programming of how he wants you to be specifically. Not everybody else. And see the danger of covetousness. What is covetousness? It is a device that Satan uses because you look at other people's life and you want that life for yourself. And even though it's not the will of God for you, you'll fight, you'll bite, you'll tear, you'll wrestle, you'll, you'll, you'll throw a fit because you want your life to look like what you saw rather than the life that you've been sent to act out. 
So this often happens. When somebody, when a, when a man is homosexual, does the, the spirits that he have in him, they are female. They desire men. So they're living out their life through you. And as a man, you don't want woman. Because these female demons want men. They want to be with the man. Because they are female demons. So they're looking at the man with lust. They're looking at the man committing adultery in their heart, in, in their heart inside of your body. So when, when a man gets delivered from homosexuality, he's getting delivered from uh, female demons that actually desired and craved men. That's why when, when they are ejected from that body, that man now can live as a straight man wanting a woman, a virtuous woman that God has for him. Now look at this here. A homosexual man could be set free from these female demons and he could still choose if he don't meditate and use his imagination to progress in the heavenly realms with God and he don't spend time with the Lord and he don't seek the Lord and he don't feel that spot in his imagination in his brain. I'm going to show you something. This is so mighty and this goes with the lesbian too. He can begin to remember and dwell upon all the information that those female demons used to speak to him. This is how somebody undoes their deliverance because now even though those spirits are gone, they start to remember all the information and start to play with that information. They start to perform that information until the spirit comes back. And takes possession of the body again. That's why people have to go through multiple deliverances on earth. Because even if you get delivered from a thing. You could dabble with the information that that thing gave you. That, and when I say thing I'm really talking about these demon spirits. All the things that they spoke to you. You could start to remember it. Let me give you a practical example. Say Sasha. Sasha gets free from attitude problems and dishonor and disrespect, and she has demons of anger. Let me show you something. So Sasha goes to a workplace, and the boss begins to rebuke her, tell her, um, I don't like that you, um, you brought your friend over here uh, uh, yesterday and brought them into the workplace. I don't want you to bring none of your friends into the workplace. Only you are allowed to come inside of this sacred building. Sasha is delivered from anger spirits, and spirits of attitudes and spirits of dishonor. In this one moment, while Sasha is listening to the boss, Sasha begins to remember, I used to slap people that talked to me like this. I used to give people a piece of my mind that used to talk to me like this. Now, mind you, watch this here. The demon is gone. But Sasha is remembering how the demon used to operate through Sasha. So now Sasha, she begins to talk to the boss and say, let me tell you something. You're not going to tell me that I can't bring my friend here. And Sasha starts going off. I want you to see this. Sasha does not have a demon guiding her into this. She's not possessed by a demon. She is possessed by the knowledge that the demon used to Give to her. She is living in the reality of that. She acts it out. Now she has given place to who? The devil. Let me show you something the demonic between devil and devils. The Bible talked about people having devils. So what's the difference? The devil, devils. Devils represent different kinds of devils. We have the devil, Satan, but then you have devils. These are um, the satanic clone angels. Like they have the same agenda as Satan. But they have mastery in their specific departments. 
So they're very deceptive and crafty. And, and the devil could use and dispatch them. And it's like you dealing with the devil himself. But it's really the devils. Because they are mentored by the devil to operate in those devices, the trickery, the, the deceptions, the temptations, the suggestions. Are you understanding? So when we deal with the devils, we have people that are possessed with devils, and these are spirits that they are mentored by the devil to keep you in bondage to a specific subject, like people that are struggling with obesity. They have devils. They have devils of gluttony. Are you understanding this? Gluttony is a sin. All right? Because now it's like you're committing suicide because you're killing off your health on purpose. You're eating 24 donuts at one time. Gluttony is a self-destructive spirit where now you can, and, and people that, um, I, I'm going to say this real shockingly, right? People, have you ever seen somebody that they were obese and they was talking to themselves? I've seen it in life because they have devils. They'll be talking to themselves, just like the, the person on the side of the street walking that's insane. The big old person will be talking to themselves. Have you ever seen, I, I saw it the other day, I saw a big old woman walking down the street. It was a big old woman. You could tell she was 300 pounds. And she was a white woman. And she was talking to herself with air, earphones on and acting crazy. When people have devils, they do self-destructive things to themselves. It's not just gluttony, it's drug use, drug abuse. It's uh, addiction to pills. When you have devils, addiction to pills. Um, when people be smoking weed, devils. When people be smoking cigarettes, devils. Because if you ever deal with those person, they also have gossip spirits. Uh, people that smoke cigarettes got gossip spirits. People that drink got gossip spirits. People that got gluttony has gossip devils. I said people that have gluttony devils also have gossip devils. You say, well, how do you know this? How could you just make that as a definite and as an absolute? Because de the devils are, are in relationship with each other. So when, when somebody has one, the devil of gluttony, they got the devil of gossip as well. The devil of disloyalty, the devil of strife. Because they are also... Um, in cahoots with another devil that is fleshly. You got to be fleshly to be jealous of somebody. You got to be fleshly to talk to somebody and be two-faced. You know, like you talking with them and then you go and go tell somebody else what they told you behind their back. You got to have devils to do that. Are you understanding? You got to have devils to trick somebody like you are trustworthy and safe to share their business with you, and then you're going to go share their business with somebody else behind their back, and that person is their enemy. The Bible talked about that being busybodies. See, when you have devils, you become a busybody. I was reading Job chapter 3. In Job chapter 3, it says something profound. I was studying that. In Job chapter 3, oh, no, Job chapter 2, actually. The Lord God asks Satan, where have you been? This is what the devil said. I have been going to and fro on the earth, walking up and down in the earth. Walking up and down. Saints, this in your Bible, Job chapter 2. Satan is telling God, I've been going up and down. Where have I been? I've been going up and down. I've been busy. But doing nothing. And saints, 
This is what Satan does with man. Satan wants you to go up and down in the earth doing nothing beneficial for your soul in eternity. So that when you leave the earth, you won't get no reward. So that when you leave the earth, you'll end up in eternal damnation, the lake of fire, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's a place down there where people are burning up right now as we speak. And if you don't live for the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit be the one that is guiding you and you don't call upon him to take over your life, you'll end up in this place. Wow. So I, I want to share this with you. When God delivers you from something, it's a bad habit and he sets you free from it. You could go back to it without the actual demon that had authorized it. You could go back to it without that demon. That's why the Bible says give no place to the devil. That means that the devil wasn't even present. You just told the devil, I'm going to give you a key. To my house, my heart. I'm going to give you a key so that you can come and live inside of my heart again. The Bible says that when somebody is delivered, the Lord said that the house is swept clean. When the Bible said that the house is swept clean, it's vacant. It means that the Holy Ghost is not even in the body. People get delivered from demons and the Holy Spirit is not living inside of them. They have to call upon the Lord and let the Lord know. That's what prayer is. It's you letting the Lord know, now you come take over this vacancy. If you don't do that, you're just vacant. Now, the vacancy doesn't remain like that forever. The Bible says that the devil says, let us go find seven more wicked spirits, the, the spirit that left you. And let us go enter in. The Bible said that the state of that man is worse than before. You know why? Because the man was set free by God and the man didn't pursue God. And when I say man, I mean male or female. So there are people that get delivered from devils and then they don't have no interest in Jesus. They spend their time wrong. They don't call upon his name. They don't ask for the Holy Spirit. Because you have to ask for the Holy Spirit to come inside of you and take you over and lead you and guide you and talk with you. And they have no desire to meditate on the word. They have no desire and they end up being an open vacancy and those spirits come again. And when they come, you'll see that person more bold, doing more evil than they ever did before. I, and let me just tell you something, and I want you to remember this. When somebody is set free by God, and they don't receive the Holy Ghost. When those seven devils come back, or that devil comes back with seven other devils with him, seven more unclean spirits, unclean spirits, rather, unclean spirits, they are there to have you make your garments filthy. Everybody has garments. Your garments is representing the decisions you make on in life. But see, physically right now, you can't see your garments. Your garments become clean when you're in the will of God, meaning you're in the soul of God, meaning you are fulfilling what he saw in, your, in his mind you doing at this current time. I've been with people many a times and they'll see so much miracle signs and wonders around me and I'll tell them, think about it. From the foundation of the world, you were supposed to be with me right now. That's why you're able to see these signs and wonders. That's why you're able to see these miracles. That's why you're able to see all these things happening because from the foundation of the world, you were scheduled to be right here with me. I often do that with people and, and it's crazy how I've seen people over the years forget the supernaturality, when they're not around me and they'll go right back to their sin. What's going on there? From the foundation of the world, 
there are things that are supposed to take place for you that's in God's soul. He saw you being at a certain location, experiencing a certain miracle, experiencing a certain event with him. Now, this is what the will of God is. The will of God is when you start living out the soul of God. What's inside of your soul right now? A will. What's inside of your soul right now? Emotions. What's inside of your soul right now? Thoughts. Well, when you're in the will of God, you're in what he thought about you doing, you, where you being, with who he thought about you being with. You're in his emotions. You're making him feel the way that he created you to make him feel. Because Colossians, and then in Revelation chapter 4, I believe, it said that he made you for his perfect pleasure, which means I made you to make me feel good. I made you to touch my emotions. I created your body to do certain things and say certain things and be a certain person that will make me feel good. And then watch this here. The next thing is uh, the will. So in God's soul, is his will. We dealt with the thoughts. We dealt with the emotions. In his, in his soul is his will. So when somebody is in the soul of God, the will of God, they're in the soul of God, this is where his brain had imagined you being when he made you. There's certain times in your life where you're not in the will of God. That means that when God created you, it was him that made you. Psalm 100 said that it was God that made you and not you yourself. You belong to him. I think that's the book of Corinthians that say that you was bought with a price. The blood of Jesus was a fresh payment revealed to you in this current time that I own you. So you're not here for yourself. So how could you go smoke weed and I didn't create you to smoke weed? That's not what I saw you doing. How could you be promiscuous in that? I didn't see you being promiscuous. Promiscuous. How could you date around and be on a dating website? And I didn't see you being on a dating website. How could you go join a church? I didn't create you to go join that church. When you understand this, the will of God is the soul of God. That's why you could grieve the Holy Spirit when you're not in his will. Because his soul is feeling grief. He's upset. He's bothered. It hurts him to see you resisting the way that he created you to function. When you're in anxiety, you grieve the Holy Spirit because he didn't make you anxious. When you worry, you grieve the Holy Spirit because he didn't make you worried. When you are fearful, you grieve the Holy Spirit because he didn't create you to be fearful. He, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what it's saying, Timothy. When you are jealous, you grieve God. Because he didn't create you to be jealous. Songs of Solomon, I believe, that say that jealousy is as cruel as, cruel as the grave. If I'm not mistaken, song, Songs of Solomon. When you're lustful, you grieve the Holy Spirit because he didn't create you to be lustful. When you are prayerless and weary, it grieves the Holy Spirit because he created you to pray. He created you to have full momentum in the will of God to be consistent. And have endurance. He that endures to the end shall be saved. So just think about this. When, in order for you to ascend into the heavenly realm, let me give you some practical ways. You must learn to have quiet time with the Lord. You must learn to have quiet time with the Lord. Also, some side points. Meditation is, is very, um, if you're going to get in a relaxed place and meditate, it's very good that you do it when you're still fresh. Um, and I, I have to do the, I have to break this down in two portions because in some cases is, is not wrong because I, I have gone into a trance when it looked like I was going into sleep while I was meditating. And this has happened to me before when I had the encounter where I went into the marketplace. I was going through a tough time financially and I saw all these fruits and I'm inside the marketplace. When I got to the cash register, the guy gave me money. 
at the cash register. And then I saw all these big old sweet potatoes and watermelons and all these fruits. And the Lord was telling me, it's harvest time. I'm going to provide supernatural money and supernatural provision for you. And that happened. Shortly after, days later, later I met a guy that was sent of the Lord to bless me, to be an investor in my life. There's several other people. So uh, shortly after I had that trance, what is a trance? It's, it, it seemed like you fall asleep, but you, you're awake. And the Holy Spirit shows you and gives you pictures of things and visions of things while you're still awake. And it's obviously seen. It's like an open vision. When somebody operates in meditation, God will increase trances. You'll be watching with your physical eye and something will come in front of you and you'll be able to see it. You'll see people. You'll see disasters. Like, um, remember I prophesied to you and told you that the Iranian president, remember I prophesied to you, I told you that Iran was behind the attack of Israel. Remember I told you that? Shortly after, th this was... um. um around November, I believe, or at the beginning of that war. I told you who's behind it is not so much Gaza and all these people you see. I say it's Iran. America got up. Watch this here. The government that we say is top intelligence, they got up and said, no, Iran has nothing to do with this. Watch this here. Weeks later, America gets up and says, they start to agree that Iranian uh, have some, some stuff in this. Watch this here. The president got up from our, uh, of our Iran, started threatening um, Israel, started talking that talk. Yes, sir. And he wanted smoke with the Holy Ghost. Because when you mess with Israel, you mess with the Holy Ghost. And he was talking that talk, and he started making it known, hey, you know, we basically behind this. Israel going to get what they deserve. When they hit Israel, they're, like, they're getting what they deserve. He was talking that talk. So tell me why. This man is dead. Tell me why he died yesterday. Huh? Huh? Excuse me. Are you listening to me? He wanted smoke with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost killed him. I'm going to tell you like this, saints. I know, I know that there's a new grace message and there's all type of messages going on talking about how God don't get angry. Let me tell you something. If you believe that God don't get angry, you should be embarrassed because you don't know him. <laughs> I would be embarrassed to say that God don't get angry. You, you cross the Holy Ghost, he going to deal with you. Tell me how Iran and everybody that was talking that talk with the Iranian president, all the prominent leaders with him, how they all dead today. Tell me. Because the Holy Ghost. If you cross him, he'll cross you back. Now, I told you the Holy Spirit, some people, he does it immediately. Some people, he'll do it over time. The Holy Spirit is not one to play with. And, and don't think I'm no hypocrite of this. Everything that the Holy Spirit tells me to do, I do it. <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm constantly in communication with him because he has very, very much scary sides to him. The Holy Spirit has very, very much scary sides to him. 
very, very much scary sides to him. The Holy Ghost created hell. It was the Lord's idea for the angels that fell when God was ang angry that they would defy him and use their soul to come up against him. He created this place for them, but the Holy Ghost brought it into manifestation. The Holy Ghost created hell. It brought the manifestation of hell. I want you to hear this. The Holy Spirit knows how to get you away from hell in, eternal, in eternity. That's why he guides you and tells you what to do. That's why if you follow his voice, you'll escape the wrath to come. This Iranian president started talking about how he's going to do this and do this and started laughing at Israel when they got bombed and thought it was funny and thought it was funny that they successfully got their mission accomplished against Israel to bomb them and kill people there. He thought it was funny. Thought it was funny. Tell me why he's dead today. Tell me. I want to know. Tell me why he's lifeless, that he no longer exists on the earth. Tell me why that man is in hell today. Tell me why he could hear my voice talking right now. He wanted, he wanted to glory in evil. He wanted to work with devils. He wanted to fulfill the gates of hell and their plot. And now it's no more. There's some of you are watching me, you, you need the Holy Spirit. Even though you're a believer, you need the Holy Spirit because you could be a believer and still not have the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the book of Acts, the apostle asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we have not such as heard about there being a Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not a thing. It's not a thing. It is God's spirit. The person of the Holy Ghost, he is on the earth today that if you call upon Jesus and you ask Jesus for his will, you want to be his friend and you want to serve him all the days of your life, he gives you the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the voice box of Jesus. It's the voice box. He is the voice box of the Father. He is the voice box. You hear both the Father and the Son talking to you. The Holy Ghost. And if you follow what he says, you escape the wrath of God. And let me tell you this. When you get emotional and you get tied up in your emotions, you'll start to fight the Holy Ghost. When you start getting carnal and sensual, you'll start fighting the Holy Ghost. Be very careful of becoming emotional and sensual because when you're so emotional, you'll fight the Holy Ghost. That when he tells you to do something, you won't do it. And you're, the Bible talks about hardening your heart because now you're saying, I don't feel like doing it right now. I don't feel like saying it. I don't feel like submitting myself. And when you start to resist the Holy Spirit, it is a dangerous decision. There's some of you are watching me right now. You say, Holy Spirit, I ask you to come inside of me and live in me. Holy Spirit, enter me. Enter inside of me. Enter inside of my body. Enter inside of my mind. Live inside of my soul and lead me into your plan every single day. I want you to pray that. Ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I let you inside of me. Holy Spirit of the Lord, I let you inside of me. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. 